Hi folks, welcome back to RailDig. Today, I'll take a look at applying a protective coating to the EPS, or extruded polystyrene foam, that many of us use in building our layouts and dioramas. This is a terrific lightweight and strong material that's become incredibly popular in recent years. Not too long ago, I bought a Proxon hot wire foam cutter to ensure precise dimensions and clean angles when working with EPS. As strong as EPS is though, its surface can be easily scratched and marred just by being handled. As I like to make small little dioramas and scenes for our RailDig products, I wanted to see if there was some kind of coating that I could apply to the foam that would give me a bit of a protective shell. I could always make a separate fascia board for these small scenes, but I was really looking for a one-step solution for these little bases. An epoxy coating was a thought, but I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. I then thought about something like glue or Mod Podge, which I use all the time in diluted form for my scenery work. I was surprised to see Mod Podge makes what they call their hard coat version. Like many Mod Podge products, this is billed as a water-based sealer, glue, and finish. From their website, they write, Mod Podge hard coat is great to use on surfaces that will be handled frequently or those in high traffic areas like bookshelves and furniture. Okay, this hard coat sounds promising. I also picked up a fresh bottle of regular Elmer's glue. Well, let's test that too. I wanted to try for a smooth application of these liquids, so I bought a mini foam paint roller and a few foam brushes. I already had a bottle of the Mod Podge mat. This is the yellow bottle, so I figured we'd test that as well. For this test, I cut three pieces of foam for each coating. These pieces are a small diorama base, a smaller piece of the foam that was cut from the base, and a very small scrap piece with a few squiggly cuts. The squiggly cuts were mostly because I really like using that Proxon cutter. I began by applying these coatings with the black foam brush and then on the smaller diorama bases, going over it with the foam roller to get rid of any brush marks. Even with the black foam brushes, you do still get brush marks. I'm focusing on the edges, corners, and sides of these little pieces. Ideally, I'd like to create little bases that look crisp and clean after I finish adding scenery and all the handling that's involved with that. It really is surprising how easy it is to put little dents and dings into this foam. I decided to apply three very thin coats to every piece of foam. As all of these coatings dry pretty quickly, I was able to get this done from application to being completely dry inside of about an hour. The foam roller portion was kind of a mixed bag during the application as the roller actually ended up absorbing some of the coating. This would be easy enough to work around next time though by keeping the roller a bit more wet with the liquid. We'll speed the video up just a bit here as the only thing that's more boring than watching paint dry might be watching a protective sealer being applied. I applied the coatings to half of the foam sections to get a better feel for how the coated areas would protect against those little dents, dings, and scratches compared to the non-protected sections. We'll do a few little tests after all the coatings have dried to see if we can't determine a winner here. Okay, back to real-time speed. All the foam pieces are now dry and both the Mod Podge applications with the black foam brush and then the foam roller look pretty good, very smooth. The Elmer's glue didn't fare so well with the foam roller as small air bubbles formed and then dried that way, leaving lots of little bumps on the surface. Now that the pieces are dry, I needed a simple way to test the effectiveness of these coatings. I decided on a scratch test and a tap test. First, the scratch test. I used a wooden coffee stirrer to simply scratch the surface of the foam and see how much of an impression it would create. Now, these tests aren't going to be overly scientific, as I know the pressure I use will likely vary, in spite of my best efforts to apply similar pressure. Still, they should be useful. The Mod Podge hard coat and the Mod Podge mat both perform pretty well at providing some protection. The Elmers did too, but I found it cracked on the surface a bit more than the other two from Mod Podge. Next up are the squiggle cut small pieces. I didn't do any tests on these, instead just running a finger over the surfaces. 
All three coatings here really gave these pieces an almost plastic feel, and I'd definitely say all three are a bit more durable as a result. Now we come to the tap test. Again using the coffee stirrer, I tapped on the treated and untreated, thin edge sections of these foam pieces. I wanted to see how much the coating would prevent against the foam deforming. All three actually did a pretty good job. I do think the Mod Podge hard coat did the best job. It does show a little edge deforming, but the edge I used for the hard coat test really was incredibly thin. Now a lot of this scratching and tapping may seem a little excessive for small pieces of foam, and I might be able to blame my Proxon hot wire foam cutter for this. After cutting foam on the Proxon, I really want to keep those beautifully sharp lines intact. As I mentioned earlier, I could make little fascia pieces from styrene or similar material, but if I can eliminate that step on these small pieces, I'd prefer that. And by the way, I just looked up the pronunciation, and it seems both fascia and fascia are correct, with fascia being more of a medical term. So there's that. Here's the very thin edge of foam I use for the Mod Podge hard coat test. While it does show a few dents after tapping, you can see just how thin this edge section is. Just a quick side note here. Mod Podge lids come with a paper liner in the lid. I find these get crusty in a hurry and in turn make the threads on the bottle a bit crusty. I always remove the paper liner from the lid and cut a small square of a Ziploc freezer bag, then place that over the neck of the bottle. This keeps all bits of dried glue from falling back into the bottle and overall less messy. With these tests finished for now, I do think the Mod Podge hard coat is the best of the bunch I've tested today for protecting foam. As a final test, I thought I'd make a small scene and see how well these edges would hold their shape being handled while applying some paint and scenery. I gave this piece of foam three light coats of the Mod Podge hard coat with only the black foam brush, not using the roller at all. I then hit it with flat black using the airbrush. Okay, now it's time for some quick basic scenery. I use Gorilla wood glue here to attach the base layer of soil. I'm using a small flat brush to get the glue right up to the edge of the base. I always keep lots of containers of baked and sifted soil on my shelves. You never know when you're gonna wanna build something. This is kind of an odd cut in the foam, as I really didn't plan on building a scene, but we can make it work, I think. A little more Gorilla Glue and some wood chip bits that were ground up in an old coffee grinder will help hide some of the sharp edges on the surface. I'm not being rough handling this piece, but on a small, untreated piece of foam like this, the edges would soften up just by the kind of handling I'm doing here. So far, the Mod Podge hard coat is doing a nice job of protecting these edges. I've added some more ground cover and a few quick trees I just put together. I think the Mod Podge hard coat did a really nice job of keeping the edges and corners crisp. By using the black foam brush and not the roller, brush marks were created, but it almost looks like a bit of wood grain under the black paint. The Mod Podge is sandable, so I suppose these could have been removed. Overall, I'm very happy with the Mod Podge hard coat. It's added a thin, protective layer to this piece of extruded foam and helped keep those Proxon cuts nice and sharp. I would definitely recommend Mod Podge Hard Coat. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found some useful tips here today. If you did, 
please help us grow the Rail Date channel by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.